Well, Lim Record says, I agree. I'm from the UK and don't find British women attractive anymore. I experienced Romania and could not believe how different the women are. Okay, fine. That's cool. And then the interesting here from, there's a comment from Leah Willow, who I, who's a woman, and she says, these same women who have masculine energy seem to have a hard time escaping a hard time accepting a man's energy. It's so twisted. Okay, fine. But then she says, men basically have to become more feminine. That's the only way to adapt. I, I don't agree with that, do you? That's never going to work, is it? Or at least... So what she's saying is if you're sitting in the West and there's a super masculine ball breaker woman, then the man needs to adopt more of the feminine role in order to get with her. But she's not going to respect that guy, is she? Or not in the long I have term, seen, anyway. I have seen relationships where the woman plays a more masculine role and the guy is a bit more feminine. But is is that the natural dynamic that should be in play? I don't think so. I think masculine energy tends to be carried effect, more effectively by men and feminine energy tends to be carried more effectively by women. Now, I think the fact that women in, in the West carry masculine energy is just a, a, a product of, 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 of just the circumstances the Anglosphere is in with mm. work culture, you know, empowerment, female empowerment. There's nothing wrong with that. I think there's a, a misconception where women get offended, where they think, you know, we're saying, right, men must be dominant. There's a patriarchy. Men must rule. We're not saying that. And we're not saying men are better than women. Mm. We're just simply saying you need two polarizing energies to have a successful relationship. If I look at the most successful relationships I've had, it's been me playing the, a masculine role and the girl I'm with willingly wanting to play a more feminine role with a feminine energy yeah, and that's yeah. the most beautiful you know experience i've had in terms of dating mm. when i've dated uh, short-term more masculine women it's a shit show like, yeah I, I don't she doesn't want it she wants to be with a more feminine guy i want to yeah. be with a more feminine woman and therefore it doesn't work but rejection is in play for a very reason these these haven't gone hasn't really worked out yeah you know, in terms of long -term. that's great that's nature saying this isn't a good fit and I've got no issue if, if women want to be a bit more masculine. Yeah, if a girl decides, right, I want to climb the corporate ladder, I want to be a bit of a rule breaker, I want to, you know, be a bit more muscular, I want to um I want to boss guys around, I want to learn how to fight. I personally don't have any issue with that. I'm yeah. very libertarian, very libertarian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would I personally date a woman like that? No, it's not what I find attractive. Yeah. I don't understand why 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 there is such an issue with People just living and living, you know, this live and let live circumstance. Why do people feel the need to like have to comment or have to like intervene in other people's lives? It's such bullshit. Well, you, you know, you, you you could say, well, it's it's fine for for, for women to have um, their preferences, but if a guy, particularly a white heterosexual male, expresses preferences, then you know that that's problematic. Um, so there is that side of things, but without going too far down that rabbit hole, because I agree with you, I don't really mind. I mean, if if, if a woman wants to be a girl boss. That's great. That's fine. Would I necessarily want to date her? Probably not. It's kind of funny, actually, because there was this English girl that I was dealing with a while back and um, she and she was actually very sweet, quite sweet and feminine and all the rest of it. But she was telling me how she would um, came out in conversation, as it does, over afternoon tea, how she'd uh, pegged a couple of guys. And I was like, yeah, I'm not really not really feeling that. That's not really my scene. Is she lining up for a good old pegging? Well, she wasn't, she didn't really offer it. I, I was like, yeah, it's not really my scene, but it's kind of interesting how that was an English woman. And, and again, you know, she was on the more feminine side of the equation, but still it's like, well, you know, this is the way that we're, that we're going. She said, some guys like it. I'm like, okay, fine. Well, you know. well, you've got that amazing. So I'm not sure if you're able to tell it, but maybe one day you can tell the story of the, uh, you going into one of the, the German. Oh yeah, club. yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that I can... was a great story. Well, I did. Yeah, I went into, I, I saw a, a dude getting pegged by his girlfriend in a club in Berlin because in Berlin, a lot of just crazy shit happens. And um, we I was there with this the interesting guy. thing you said you said before that was you saw them and you got talking to them in a bar beforehand. And you found out they were going to the same club. Yeah, and he was quite a big masculine guy. And she yeah. was quite a sweet. Yeah, yeah, quiet, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, and you didn't see them again until you walked in. <laughs> yeah, and you just saw her absolutely destroying him. Like, Peg. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was a really monster. it was a really weird because I mean, obviously, like loads of weird shit happens in, in these Berlin clubs. I was with this Russian girl that I was seeing at the time and, you know, we were walking around and yeah, I'd seen them before. She was this petite blonde Irish girl. He was an Irish lad. They were all to seemed totally normal, very friendly. He was physically bigger than her. Anyway, next thing we know, he's in one of those chairs with like stirrups and it, his legs are sort of like divided and she's there with the, you know, the strap on and she's pegging him. And not only that, but she had a top off and there was a group of guys sort of stood around like watching and some of the dudes are like feeling her her breasts and things 
And she was, um, and, and, and these guys, and she was going to, saying to the guy, she was like verbally humiliating him as well. She was saying, oh, these guys are so much more masculine than you. Oh, I love the way this dude's feeling my, feeling my breasts. Oh, this is so hot. This is, that, this, I bet this guy's so much better in bed than you. She's like really giving it to him verbally as well. And he was loving it. So look, I mean, different strokes for different folks, right? But that, <laughs> that that's a sort of a, an extreme of the, the wrong side of this equation that we're talking about, isn't it? Yeah. I, I would, I would well, argue. The, right side, the right side for him <laughs> well dark side, the dark side for some of us but the right side the bright, I mean, the I, bright I, and the side I, for him. again I, I think it's one of those things I mean look every, people are into what they're into they're, their own yeah there, there is going to be a subsector of people who are who are into that and that's and, and and actually you know people talk a lot about about cucks and cuckolding and all that stuff don't they in this space and and actually you, you, you've got some experience of that from the from the right side of the equation as, as well I think but I think, yeah, on the one hand, we can recognize, yes, there are some guys, there are some men who, who, who yes, they are into this more submissive thing. They're into being some, some kind of humiliation or whatever. Okay, fine. But that is, a, that is a very, very small minority of guys. And it's not what most guys want. And it's not what most women find attractive, I, I don't believe, to, to be honest. I think women, I don't know, what do you think? I mean, maybe you've got a different view. No, from, from my experience, um, I mean, look, <laughs> Fifty Shades of Grey, fastest selling book of all time, right? BDSM, manipulation, dominance, psychological control, masculine on the feminine. Women get off on that. Like the majority of women, that's what they get off on. They get off on this feeling of powerless. I mean, there's a the prequel or the original Fifty Shades of Grey written by a, a woman in 1950s France. I, Pauline, I'm going to butcher the name, Rayag. Rayag, something like that. The story of O. Mm. Uh, that's where the name Chateau mm. Hartis came from. That was the castle this 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 girl's kept in. Mm. If you read that, um, I've given that to a few women to read, um, and it's more it's basically a hardcore version of Fifty Shades, uh, the original, and they fall in love with it. I'm like, yeah. pick a scene that we can replicate, and you know, they they fall in love with that book because it's it's a, it's an extreme it's extreme power and dominance and. If it, a very feminine girl, and this isn't to judge if women don't get off on this, but women I've dated who tend to be cool on the more feminine side of the spectrum, they absolutely get off on that book. I remember right? my, um, I remember my ex who we, you, who we, you know, you know about um, having was had that on her Kindle. I think she was a fan as well. Story Not, of O. Yeah. Red flag. Don't book. know. Red flag or just? I'd say it's a green flag. I'd say it's a green flag. I mean, mm. the, yeah, there's, there's other red flags. Some, <laughs> There's this red flags, there's green flags. I mean, we we always joke, don't we? But red flags become green flags for a one night stand. But I'm not sure. Well, yeah, red flags are definitely red flags for a relationship. <laughs> I need to I need to read it actually because it is one of those ones. Because she also had Marky de Sade as well. I don't know if you know him, like 120 Days of Sodom, where they're going into all this kind of you know all these crazy kind of BDSM things and stuff. Which you know, fine, whatever. I need to really read. Um, I I do need to read Story of It's just one of those things I've always. It's a really interesting one because it's it's. Um, I'd say the three books that really for me were eye-opening in terms of the relentlessness of, of of a woman's sexuality because there's this myth that we all are brought up to believe that women aren't sexual. Yeah. Um, that, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's the men, men are the sexual, you know, beasts and all this. It's absolute bullshit. I mean, women are... Yeah, yeah, way, yeah. The, the majority of the women I've dated in recent months have been way haughtier than well, me. I don't know whether I'm just getting old or I'm attracting absolute nymphos. But the three books for me that were completely eye-opening, My Secret Garden by Nancy Friday, a bit of a trailblazer, 1970s women's sexual fantasies, um, The Story of O, and A Billion Wicked Thoughts, which is a billion internet porn searches from mm. men and women and what men and women actually get off to what they actually watch online as opposed to what they say they're watching. Because when you do a porn survey and you ask people what they what they watch, obviously most people get embarrassed and they lie. Even an anonymous survey, I'm not sure they tell the truth, but when they these two Google d data scientists basically bought the data from big porn companies, so they, there's completely yeah. objective. And the stuff that um, men and women watch is actually pretty interesting. I mean, there's a big subsector of, of women that get off to vampire porn, <laughs> right? Absolutely obsessed with vampires. Well, and quite... I don't know, maybe, maybe it's the domination, maybe it's the control, the blood sucking. I don't know. I don't know. Even werewolf more... as well. Werewolf. <laughs> they love werewolves. Even more recently that I've I've heard that women, I've seen articles about saying that women are quite into more, you know, like quite quite violent type stuff, actually, or quite, you know, quite near the knuckle kind of kind of stuff compared to guys. I mean, I think guys are probably are much more vanilla in that. What would you say though? The counter argument to the women being more sexual though is that men have 17 times the amount of testosterone, so men are more sort of horny, but I I I don't know. I think it's the sort of 
it might be that men are more ready to go at a moment's notice, but women seem to have this much deeper, sort of richer kind of fantasy life than, than, than regular dudes do, I think. I think it's men are so much more visual, aren't they? Whereas women, it's, it's absolutely stimulation of the mind and the senses. And, yeah. you know, reading a bit of kind of around, again, I'm not advocating guys do this, but reading just interest factor, reading stuff around kind of iceberg slim, you yeah, know, the yeah, old school yeah. American pimps. The, they all say that if you can almost remove your sexuality as a man and you, you focus on getting inside a woman's mind, that's where really the fireworks happen, right? Because it's all imagination. It's all verbal. And again, look at Fifty Shades of Grey. The, you know, there wasn't a porn movie that went viral called Fifty Shades of Grey. It was a book. Mm. It's words. It's ideas. It's thoughts, right? Yes. Uh, and that's the, that's the real mental stimulation I think women get. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, which is why the, 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 the female romance novel sector is so huge i mean you don't really have an equivalent for well the equivalent for men is porn because we're very visual but they like to read about so it. visual yeah yeah 